Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so I come to you from my old uh, iPhone camera, uh, just because, mainly because I actually am leaving super early tomorrow morning for yet another interview. Um, but um, you know, I I just thought I would unwind by doing a haul vi video today, um, and I wanted it to be as easy as possible to upload, and it's a bit less of a hassle when it's just on my phone and I can just kind of uh, click over to YouTube and and upload it. Um, so yeah, I, I have a ton of books. Um, it was my birthday last Thursday, so as I mentioned in my last video. Uh, and so I got some Barnes & Noble gift cards, and, or one Barnes & Noble, Barnes Noble gift card for $50, and one Amazon gift card for $25. And, um, and then I have uh, some other books from uh, some, other, uh, some other places. Uh, I mentioned that I went to Fayetteville, Arkansas and visited the bookstore there, and... Um, and I did buy a few books there, so some of the some of these books are from there. Um, and then I also just kind of indulged myself in the week of my birthday and ordered some books from thriftbooks.com. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm not gonna specify where each book comes from just because I think it would get tedious, um, and they're kind of out of order right now. But so I thought it would start with the one that was a bit of a disappointment. Um, so this is a Revolution in Psychiatry by Ernest Becker. Um, so. Uh, the book that I thought I was getting in the mail was The Denial of Death, which you can see is kind of uh, advertised at the bottom here. Um, and uh, that's what I thought I was ordering. And the main reason I wanted to read The Denial of Death by, by Ernest Becker was because it is uh, one of the foundational um, texts of uh, terror management theory, um, which I won't go into the details of terror management theory, but it's a really important theory in psychology, and it's very important to my master's thesis, actually. And, um, I, I've done enough reading that I don't need to have read, uh, The not Denial of Death to write my thesis, but I thought it would be interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, this is what you risk when you order from thriftbooks.com, because that's where I ordered it from. Uh, they apparently just were lying. <laughs> um, but this book still sounds kind of interesting. It's kind of about, um mental illness and how uh, modern society in particular tends to uh, promote the development of mental illness. Um, and uh, I sort of I sort of have been vaguely interested in that idea for a long time, this idea that you know humans evolved in a very different environment from where we live right now. you know um, where we live now in cities and big communities like that um, is very different from the small hunter gatherer groups we lived in in our evolutionary past. And um, that a lot of psychologists hypothesize that that has a big consequence for our mental health. Um, and so I think it sounds like this book kind of uh, uh, deals with that. Um, so I think I, was, uh, I will still read this, just get my money's worth. But uh, yeah, that, uh, that's a big disappointment. And um, I don't know, it kind of puts a, puts a hole in my faith in thriftbooks.com because before I really loved thrift books and uh, this is uh, not such a stellar performance. Um, but anyway, and then I have a ton of uh, Dover Thrift editions. So when I ordered books with my uh, Barnes and Noble gift cards and my Amazon gift cards, I decided to just get my money's worth as much money's worth as possible and order Dover Thrift editions, which are all cost generally under five dollars. Um, and they're not great editions. Like the actual physical books aren't great, but that's fine for me. I just wanted. Um, I just want copies of these books. Um, so the first one is one that was recommended to me by uh, a grad student I talked to at an interview. It's uh, The Garden of Heaven by Hafez. Um, so Hafez is a uh, an old Persian poet from the Middle Ages, um, one of the greatest poets in Persian literature, and uh, also a Sufi mystic. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I thought it would be cool to, it's pretty short, um, read some more poetry. I've actually been wanting to read some writings of Sufi mystics for a long time. I just haven't really known where to go. Um, so I think this will, this will be cool. Um, so yeah, there's that. I'm going to go eat through each of the books, try to go through the rest of the books a lot quicker than I went through, uh, through the Ernest Becker book because there's a lot of them. Um, the next is, uh, some buys, uh, some purchases inspired by Miriam over at, um, Between Lines in Life. So I have, uh, uh, Dialogues Concerning Natural Religion by David Hume, a work of philosophy on religion, and then An Enquiry Concerning Human Understanding by David Hume, which, uh, I learned about in my History of Psychology class, because, uh, he talks kind of about empiricism, I think, in here, um, if I'm remembering correctly, and, um, kind of deals a little bit with, um, that, 
what Descartes kind of dealt with the I think therefore I am ideas. Um, and so it was important in the history of psychology as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've read a little bit of David Hume. I've read like tiny little snippets and it seems like he's probably a very good writer. So I'm looking forward to reading these. Um, next is, uh, another tiny thing, Civilization and its Discontents. It's Puny, um, by Sigmund Freud. And uh, again, I kind of am interested in this for the same reason I mean, I was interested. I thought the Ernest Becker book might be interesting, uh, because it's kind of about how, um, our psychological unconscious impulses um, conflict with what civilization expects of us, and that can cause a lot of unhappiness. And of course, Freud, I mean, no academic psychologist really takes Freud very seriously. Um, <clears throat> but I, I find reading these old books kind of interesting. Um, they can be thought-provoking, and every now and then you read these old books and you get a research idea um, for someone like me who's in grad school. Um, and and it's just that's just always so much fun. Um, and sometimes it's fun to just quote these in your articles that you write, just um, to kind of get a discussion going or something. Um, and I just think I would also find actually reading some things by Freud interesting, just to um, even if only to be able to back up back up what I say when I deride Freud. Um, so yeah, civilization and its discontents. Next is one I bought on the recommendation of Steve Donahue. It's uh, In Praise of Folly by Erasmus. Um, I was not expecting this to be so puny. I thought it was a bit longer, because the copy that Steve always holds up looks, you know, not terribly long, but, like, you know, a, a pretty substantial thing. This, this I think, doesn't... This is not This is 70 pages. Um, but uh, uh, I know he... Erasmus talks a lot about religion in here, I think, um, and is kind of critical of religion in it. And um, so... Yeah, um, anyway, I, again, um, both a part of my own kind of personal project in terms of reading through the Western canon, um, the Western canon starter kit that Steve kind of did, and also just because it's something that actually has been on my radar for a while that I've been wanting to get to, um, because I've always been interested in religion and the philosophy of religion, so, uh, thought that would be interesting. Um, next, uh, are two books by the same author. They're both by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. I'm butchering his name, sorry, but uh, Discourse on the Origin of Inequality and uh, on the Social Contract. And um, these kind of pol old political writings uh, I've always been interested to read um, because I study political psychology and, um, again, with that idea that, you know, maybe these won't be something central to my research, but they can have a lot of thought-provoking ideas for research and, um, and you could also just quote them and kind of use their ideas to... Uh, support what you're arguing, and, uh, and also, I, I'm just interested in political philosophy, um, and politics, so, yeah. Um, next, yet another book of political philosophy, um, Second Treatise of Government and a Letter Concerning Toleration by John Locke. Again, just kind of the same idea, reading these old classics of political philosophy. Um, uh, next is, a, a book, uh, one of the founding texts of, I believe, Sociology, um, The Souls of Black Folk by W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, I was interested to read this because I have heard a bit about its contents, about, uh, how W.E.B. Du Bois talks about, um, the double, double consciousness of African Americans, and how African Americans kind of, um, in the United States at least, have to learn, sort of, both how to operate within the world of African Americans, and to appear in a certain way to white people. So they essentially have these two separate selves. And that, that, when I heard that thesis, I thought it sounded fascinating. And, um, again, re still relevant to my own research. I study political psych, which deals a lot with, uh, inequalities and racism and things like that. So, uh, yeah, this will, this will be very interesting, I think. Um, and once again, uh, this is, this panders a bit more to my interest in, uh, feminism, but it's, um, a Vindication of the Rights of Woman by Mary Wollstonecraft. Um, I did take a class on uh, feminist philosophy in my senior year of college, and ever since then I've kind of vaguely had a goal to read more of these classics of, of feminism, and um, so this is kind of a part of that, and um, I bought it because it, again, was cheap, and it's relatively short. Um, I kind of feel ashamed saying I bought books because they're short, but um, with my semester in full swing, it's much easier to read short books in my spare time than to read, uh, uh, big chunkers, um, and, um, and yeah, again, just, uh, want to read these classics of feminism as well as, uh, philosophy. Um, next is a Penguin classic, so it's actually kind of a nice addition. Um, so it's, uh, The Constellation of Philosophy by Boethius. Um, 
And, um, again, kind of along with the In Praise of Folly, um, a part of sort of reading through the Western canon and sort of work of nonfiction. I mentioned that I've sort of been in a big nonfiction craze, and so I, all of these books almost are nonfiction. Um, so yeah, just another book of philosophy. Um, you know, I, I'm not actually sure what it's about, but I think it deals a lot with the philosophy of religion, and, um, and it, I don't know, it sounds interesting. Sorry, I'm, if I don't sound very cogent in this uh, video, it's because I am mentally tired from the semester and everything. And another two books from the same author, we have uh, The Poetics by Aristotle and The Nicomachean Ethics by Aristotle. Two books that I've actually wanted to read for a really long time. Uh, I listened to a lecture about uh, The Nicomachean Ethics a, a long time ago and I thought, it, and I was intrigued by Aristotle's um, ideas about what the meaning of human life is. Um, and then Poetics, his book about uh, about drama and um, and uh, again, another just kind of one of those classics I'd like to get my, under my belt. Um, not so much related to my research or anything like that, um, but just something I would like to uh, get under my belt. It's you know, looks like it would take me a weekend or one day maybe. Um, next is another Western canon related one: uh, selected essays of Michel de Montaigne. Um, so. Steve, in his Western Canon video, recommended possibly just picking a selected essays of Montaigne, even though technically the the real deal is to read, like, his complete essays. Um, I thought that maybe starting with something a bit uh, easier, shorter, um, more conservative would be good, because I have a tendency to kind of, um, to, you know, buy the 1,200-page collected works and uh, and dive, try to dive in headfirst and then to just get overwhelmed and not read any of it. Um, so I think that's, this will be a good starting for me in, with Montaigne, and later in life I may decide to, uh, pick up his collect, his, uh, complete essays. Um, next is a pretty interesting volume. It's, um, Great Speeches by Native Americans. Um, I've talked a lot about how I'm interested in Native American, uh, literature and history and things like that. Um, even though I haven't really followed through on that interest by actually reading books about them, but... I am. Uh, and uh, so this is kind of inspired by that. Uh, Doberthrift just put it together this collection and there's there's speeches in here by uh, chiefs, Native American chiefs you've probably heard of. You know, Chief Joseph, I think a Sitting Bull is in here. And then some ones who maybe you don't know as well, um, like Russell Means, who is a late 20th century Native American activist. Um, so I think this will be this will be good. I've read a few speeches by Native Americans and uh, I've always loved them. Um, so they're, they're so, they're very eloquent, uh, from what I've read so far, um, of those I've read. Uh, I'm not saying that that means all Native Americans are eloquent, <laughs> um, because that is essentializing, but, uh, still, I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, next is The Communist Manifesto and Other Writings. Now, uh, when I bought this, actually, I honestly thought it was mainly just The Communist Manifesto that was in this collection, but it's actually, The Communist Manifesto is only, like, 20 pages long, and then the rest of this is all just writings by various, um, you know, as it says, revolutionary writings. Um, you know, there's works by, uh, there's excerpts from works by Thomas Paine and, uh, and Rousseau, and I think John Locke, and the, the Declaration of Independence is in here, um, a speech by, uh, Lenin, um, a piece by Rosa Parks, or sorry, Rosa Luxemburg, um, something by Mao Zedong, too, um, and Charter 77 by Václav Havel and others. So just a, a big compendium of revolutionary, uh, writings. I think this will be kind of interesting. And the Communist Manifesto is something I've been, I've been wanting to read for a long time as well. And, um, seemed like a perfect opportunity to finally follow through on that, uh, dream. Um, next is a book I have already talked about. I bought this, I bought, sorry, I had a notification about my battery, it's kind of running low. Um, I know, uh, this is a book I've talked about already, uh, Living Must Bury by Josie Sigler. I bought this while I was in Arkansas, and I've already talked about it in another video, um, so I'm not gonna say much about it, but it's a, a collection of poetry and I highly recommend it. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, this next one is also from, uh, the bookstore in, in Arkansas, and it is a beautiful Library of America box thing of, uh, of the complete poetry and prose of Wallace Stevens. Um, Wallace Stevens, someone who I have wanted to read more of ever since I read his poem Sunday Morning. And, um, yeah, so his complete poetry and some prose of his, uh, I think it should be interesting. There are, uh, essays in here, some letters, um, and, uh, some journal entries, I believe, as well, and obviously all of his poems. Um, so this will be great. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, and next is a book that just arrived today, again from thriftbooks.com. Um, it's A Book of Silence by Sarah Mayland. Um, I saw this first on Neil Griffith's channel, um, and didn't think much about it. Um, but then Curtis did kind of, Curtis from Curtis Books and Films did a whole, um, did a whole discussion video on it and got me really intrigued. So, uh, and I've kind of been saying in comments for a long time, like, I should read this because it, it seems right up my alley. Um, because I'm a person who values silence and being alone. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad to finally have this and, uh, be able to read it. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, it's kind of a memoir slash just general nonfiction book about finding silence and solitude, essentially, or at least, at least that's the impression I get. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, next one is, uh, the longest book here. Um, it's, uh, La Morte d'Artour by Sir Thomas Mallory. This is a Wordsworth Classics edition. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, again, the hugest book and one of the only works of fic fiction. I do have a few more left that are fiction. Um, but yeah, again, uh, I, I've been wanting to read more of these old sort of epics, epic stories of uh, medieval kings and knights and, and warriors and things. Um, and this is one of them. And it also, again, just happens to be on uh, the Western Canon starter kit that Steve, did, Steve put together. Um, so yeah, uh, glad to have that. And then finally, I have uh, copies of the last three Shakespeare plays that I haven't read. Whoa, those are upside down. Um, uh, but yeah, so there's a uh, All's Well That Ends Well, um, there is The Merry Wives of Windsor, and Cymbeline. Um, Cymbeline I'm looking forward to, and I'm looking forward to All's Well That Ends Well, too. Um, The Merry Wives of Windsor, Windsor I'm not so sure about, but I'm gonna read it anyway because, uh, I want to, I want to get through Shakespeare's works this year. Um, so, yeah, um, that is, that is just a huge birthday haul, um, books acquired around and on my birthday. Um, so yeah, anyway, I will see you all later, and, um, I have to go get sleep, so thanks guys. Bye.